Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today I have a device prototype that I want to share with you that uses an old MCU, a 4G SIM module and two push buttons to create a sort of an emergency dialer and SMS sender that can be used for elderly people or people that need care. So when the user presses one of the button, the device will call a specific and predetermined phone number or if we press the other one, then we are getting an SMS that whoever has the device needs attention. And let me demonstrate that to you. I have my phone here. So if I press one of the buttons and we start the screen recording so you could see the serial output of the device. When I press the first button, then the Node MCU instructs the module to call my number. And you can see we get the Crotel 4G and I can answer the call. I'll put it on a speaker and you can now hear my voice coming here through the microphone. And I can drop the call and that would be recognized. And I could also press the other button and that should send an SMS. I'll wait for it for a few second and there it is and it says emergency the elderly person needs help and this could be basically anything that you want it's all a matter of how you'll figure it out the star of the project is this Crowtail 4G module that uses the Simcom A7670E module to provide 4G functionality. It comes with a UART port that you can directly connect to a microcontroller and interact the board uh, through it, but also it has a USB-C port that you can connect it to a computer and interact with the module that way. So in its direct configuration, this can also function as a 4G modem on the computer and it provides network directly on. It has a battery connector that has its own board charging circuit with uh, some indicator LED. So you could also use this to power it from a battery and have a mobile uh, device that can communicate through. It has the combined USB and microphone headset jack, and it has two connectors for the antenna. So the one for the 4G and the one for the uh, GPS. On the bottom side, it has the SIM card holder and some other circuitry to make it work with uh, the rest of the board. So Electro did provide this board for free for me to test and I really thank them for that. And it's a really interesting board to have because of the ease of control that we have uh, via the serial port that we have broke down here that we can connect to basically any microcontroller. This is 3.3 volt compatible. I've read that it could also handle five volts, but I wasn't able to confirm that. So I used the, the old MCU to control it just for the sake of having a proper voltage level. So the way that this works in terms of electrical connections, I have two push buttons that I'm connecting one side to ground and from the other side, they're connecting to pin D1 and D2. And they're used to detect the pushes so we can figure out what is the action that we want to do. The one on the left will do the call and the one on the right will send an SMS and that is all controlled with the code on the Node MCU. And on the other side, the Node MCU connects to the UR port of the board and it's 3.3 uh, volts compatible. That's why I'm using a Node MCU and this would, could have easily be done with other microcontroller. I'm having connected, so let me check. So RX connects to D6 and takes connects to D5 and we are using the software serial library to control the whole thing. The 4G module is powered from a separate uh, 5 volt USB, but the way that it operates, it's uh, on 1.8 volts and it has some internal regulators. It also features a GPS module. So you could see that it has a GPS antenna here. And this is the GSM antenna. On the bottom side, we have the SIM card and some regulators. And also on the board, we have the headphones connector that we that I currently have headphones connected to, but we could also connect a speaker and a microphone. So this could be a device that is that doesn't require headphones, but it has some like a loudspeaker that can 
the, whoever is using it can uh, use it to speak directly and not needing uh, headphones. What I liked about the module is that it's really well explained on the website, including all of the features and all of the properties that it has. And with the included documentation and Viki, you have full explanation of how you get started and how you can control the board and how it's uh, built. So. All of the examples about connecting to the network, making interaction with the board, and as well, uh, you also have the full AT command manual that is quite extensive and it shows you everything that you can do with the module. In our demo, where we just made a phone call and a sent an SMS message, but as I mentioned before, the module also has a GPS on board, so you could use it to provide position as well as connectivity to your project. And it also comes with the uh, integrated battery charging. So you could have your projects uh, being mobile. The AT command manual explains everything that you can do and how you can do it. And features include the ability to communicate to 3CP IP, make HTTP request, FTP request, as well as MQTT request. So this could be a connectivity solution for your Internet of Things projects that uh, require that you are mobile and use 4G. Now, in terms of code for the device, we are using software serial and a general Arduino sketch to control it. We are initiating the software serial on pins D5 and D6 on the node MCU. And we have two other pins, D1 and D2, for the two buttons, one for the call button and the other for the SMS. And additionally, we have few variables. The most important is the care giver number, and this is what I have set up on the phone. So when a button is pressed on the device, this is the number that the device will call and you could choose to extend this so you could have it externally set. And this is the content of the message that uh, will be sent when the second button is pressed. At the beginning, we are just initializing those uh, states. We have a digital read function for the state of the buttons and then piece of code that I can use to use the serial monitor from Arduino to directly send commands to, to the module. Then I have a function that checks the call status. This is helpful for when we are within a call to figure out that the next button press on the module will trigger a hang up of the call and also to check whether the other side, uh, so the caregiver that we called disconnected the call. And this is the place where we are actually doing the action. So if we have a low state on the call button, then we're sending the right AT command. So we say AT dial and then the number with the semicolon and we are just setting some flags to know that we are in call in case we have it pressed and we are already in call then we're sending commands to drop the call and similarly the sms thing is a bit uh, more intrigued because it requires a special format for the uh, messages where they are encoded in unicode so they are recognized by the carriers and we need to first send a few commands so we can set the right state and then we have the AT CMGS command that gets the caregiver number and also the message that we are actually sending followed by a control Z character so the module knows that this is the end of our SMS. I have few helper functions so like the one with, with send data that just writes to the proper serial port and outputs any output if we have and also the function that will then connect any provided string in a form of uh, UCS2 Unicode format. Finally, this is the check call status function. So if we are in a call, then we are issuing a command to get the list of active calls. And when we figure out that there is no more an active call, then we are just setting the, the right flags and terminating the, the call. Now, I know that this might seem intimidating and quite complex, but it's really simple and it gives us really good opportunities to provide connectivity for our projects. My example uses this as an SOS caller. So you press the button and the module sends out an SMS to the phone that um, gets your attention that someone needs your help. But within that SMS and within that information that we send to the phone, we could 
provide a lot more so we could provide the gps location we could have additional sensors that are connected to the module and then this information can be easily processed and we can act upon in different systems so it provides a really good flexibility and versatility so here is the the sms sometimes depending on the network it needs a bit of time to to arrive but it usually comes within a few seconds let me demonstrate the call function once again so i press the button now in a few seconds we should get the call on the phone and there it is if i answer it and So you see that that works. If you have any ideas what we can build additionally with the module that uses a microcontroller to send data, then be sure to let me know down in the video comments. If this is something that you like, then be sure to give this video a like. Make sure to subscribe to see me do more projects in the future. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.